This week on Jerusalem Dateline, the Temple Mount in Israel's hands. 53 years after the historic Six-Day War, will Israel annex parts of biblical Judea and Samaria, the land gained in that war, the area the world calls the West Bank? And we'll look at the strategic Golan Heights. And in our hands, CBN's docudrama about the battle for Jerusalem. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. 53 years ago, Israeli soldiers captured the old city of Jerusalem. Many see Israel's victory in the 1967 Six-Day War and the liberation of Jerusalem, not only as a dramatic change in history, but as a fulfillment of prophecy. Here at the Lion's Gate on June 7, 1967, the 55th Paratrooper Brigade of Commander Monte Gore broke through Jordanian defenses. What happened next resonated around the world and electrified the Jewish people. As Commander Gore broke radio silence with that declaration, it marked the first time the Jewish people controlled Judaism's holiest site in more than 2,000 years. Within six days, we returned to the biblical land of Israel, all the mountains of Judea, Samaria, the Golan Heights. We returned to the old city of Jerusalem, and the city is liberated and reunited. And here we are, 53 years later, a new government, Jerusalem is united. It's fabulous, it's the word of God coming out of the book, materializing and becoming a reality in our times in front of our eyes. Israel's victory in the Six Day War stunned the world and became a turning point for Jewish immigration to the land of Israel. Throughout the Old Testament, God says that he's gonna draw the Jewish people back to the land. But what's interesting is that at that moment, when Mordechai Gur, the Israeli general, said on the radio, the Temple Mount is in our hands. When that was broadcast, not just through Israel, but worldwide, it electrified Jewish communities all over the planet. The level of Aliyah, Jews leaving their exile countries and coming back to the land of their forefathers skyrocketed in the years ahead. Yet more than 50 years since the battle for Jerusalem, Rosenberg says Israel and its capital remain on the front lines. Jerusalem is the epicenter. Uh, for 4,000 years, people have wanted this city and they have fought hard to get it. And so the fact that Israel controls it today uh, is biblical, it's prophetic, but it's also complicated. And we need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem and praying for Israel to be secure. After the 1967 war, Israel had tripled in size. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu now wants to annex part of that land in biblical Judea and Samaria as laid out in President Trump's annexation plan. Just about 10 miles away from here is Efrat. It's part of the Gush Etzion settlement block and part of the land in question in the annexation plan. We went out to Efrat and talked to their mayor, Oded Revivi, about the annexation plan. Well, Mayor, first of all, thanks for joining us on CBN News. Uh, so Efrat right now is also in the middle of a very big story right now, annexation, sovereignty, and the Trump peace plan. What is annexation right now in your view? We are definitely in historical times. Um, after being in Judea and Samaria with Jewish presence for the last 53 years, under this current administration, a massive change has come to the attitude of the United States towards this land. It started off with moving the embassy. It continued with the recognition of the Golan Heights being part of Israel. It carried on with Secretary Pompeo's declaration saying that the settlements are not against international law. And now we are just a few weeks away from, hopefully, the beginning of the implication, implementation of the Trump deal. The Trump deal is a vision for peace to try and create a better atmosphere in this region. The legal concept is applying Israeli law where Jews live today, which basically would mean that our status will equal to the status of the rest of the residents of Israel. And for somebody who lives here, somebody who studied law, was acting as a lawyer, somebody who serves today as a mayor, I can give you endless examples where there are two different sets of rules to the people who live in Israel, to the Jews living in Judea and Samaria. And in that respect, it is an historical significance that this might happen within the next few weeks. 
Would you say there's a difference in the reality here on the ground and the perception that the world has when they look at the West Bank, Judea and Samaria? Again, let me reflect your uh, smile because you know the answer to the question. People see headlines, sometimes created by the media, who have an interest in showing conflict, in showing battles, in showing bloodshed. If we would have had time, I would have taken you down the road from here to our supermarket where you would see Jews and Arabs walking up and down the same aisles in the same shopping center, paying in the same currency, coming to a cashier who can be an Arab or a Jew, paying and going back home to feed their kids. You drove on a road leading up to a fraud, which against all allegations of apartheid state is open both for Jews and Arabs who drive freely on the same streets, on the same roads. I can only imagine people who haven't been here, people who they get their perspective through the media, thinking that you're crazy standing opposite me without a helmet, without a bulletproof vest, but this is the homeland of the Bible. You can see how peaceful the reality is and why the current administration realized that and took that as saying, let's see what has been created. Let's see the strengths and try and build from that something stronger, better for a better future for both people. There are some Christians who feel that this is God's, God's land and according to the Bible, you should not divide it. And they're concerned about that. What would you say to them? I agree. I agree. But you have to remember two things. Number one, is we're dealing with a world that not everybody agrees with our interpretation of the Bible. And we need to get along with them as well. Number two, we're not giving away anything. The deal talks about what's happening in stage one, Israel applying Israeli law in 30% of the land, the other 70%, the Palestinian people need to take upon themselves about 10 conditions, which are all conditions that we as believers definitely pray for, that they will disarm their ammunition, that they will stop funding terrorists, that they will stop their claims over Jerusalem. A lot of things that we want to see happening as believers, as peace lovers, as people who pray for peace. Only then we start negotiations, which can lead up to four years. The American ambassador called it that the Palestinians will turn into Canadians. I prefer the biblical expression that wolves will turn into sheep and then the reality will look completely different. And final point, as a believer, speaking to believers, understanding that nothing happens without God's interference. I don't think it's any coincidence that President Trump was elected. I don't think it's any coincidence that he is the one who's brought this plan to the table. He's giving us something that we didn't have before. Let's rely also on God, how he will play the cards about the future. Well, Mayor, I appreciate uh, your perspective and uh, giving us your time about this very important matter. Coming up, we'll take a deeper look at the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria, what the world calls the West Bank. It was not my grace, but God, that I might come to the Irish nations to preach the gospel. Now available from CBN Films, I am Patrick. Get your DVD for a gift of $15 or more. What brings you back, Roman? People thought that this mission was crazy, that his efforts to Christianize Ireland were doomed to failure. From slave to missionary. Who among you heeds the call? Why would this man put himself in danger among enemies who do not know God? From sinner to saint. Patrick's story began a chain of events that is quite remarkable in the impact that it had. I am Patrick. Those are the words that begin the history of Ireland. I am Patrick. Get your DVD of this inspiring documentary today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com. The people of Israel need your prayers as they battle the COVID-19 virus. In CBN's free guide, How You Can Pray for Israel During the Coronavirus Pandemic, you'll discover ways to pray for Israel's leaders and government officials, health care providers on the front lines, Holocaust survivors and the elderly, struggling families, and more. Get your free copy of this valuable prayer guide. Call now or go to cbn.com slash pray for Israel today. 
Nigerian Christians are Christians being Christians in Iran are routinely arrested. Happily, Christians continue to suffer. In times of trial and affliction, you need to know the truth. One of the fastest growing Christian populations in the world. Join Wendy Griffith and George Thomas for Christian World News. Young people are the ones who are open to the gospel. Powerful stories of suffering and hope that affect all Christians. Watch Christian World News, Saturday at 5 p.m. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. When we talk about Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank, it's sometimes difficult to understand the area we're talking about. Here's a story we did several years ago before President Trump's so-called deal of the century and the annexation plan. CBN Scott Ross talked to Israelis who live there and about their commitment to the land and to the Bible. Known to much of the world as the West Bank, Judea and Samaria of the Bible is today home to some 360,000 Jewish Israelis and at least 1.4 million Palestinian Arabs. Shiloh. Shiloh. Okay. The first capital of ancient Israel, the place where the tabernacle stood for 369 years. David Rubin is the former mayor of Shiloh the place pronounced Shiloh and hundreds of biblically named places in America. We talked together overlooking the route in which the biblical patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would have traveled. This is where Joshua stood before the Israelites and he said, How long will you wait before coming to take possession of the land that the Lord God of your fathers has given you? This is the place where the woman Hannah came to pray for her son. The son who was born from her prayers was Samuel the prophet who grew up into prophecy in Shiloh, along with the people of Israel. And that is the issue that remains today. This is the land that God gave you. Reuben's commitment to the land came at a personal price when he and his son were ambushed by terrorists while traveling on the road home. The car was hit by a massive hail of bullets. I was shot in my leg. My son was shot in the head. Is your son still alive today? Uh, thank God my son is alive today. He had a miraculous recovery. The bullet missed his brain stem by one millimeter. Why do people choose to live in the middle of the threat of violence, their children, so forth, being exposed to this? We've come home. We're fulfilling prophecy in these times. Some 230 Israeli families live in Shiloh today. 35 years after it was reestablished in 1978. And yet Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas said recently that a future Palestinian state in this area must be completely free of Jews. How do you feel about the land for peace uh, negotiations? You give up the land, there's going to be peace. It's time for a new plan which is called Peace for Peace. We extend our hand in peace, they extend their hand in peace, we shake it and we have peace. We sign a peace treaty and all is well. Shiloh is in biblical Samaria, north of Jerusalem. Judea and Samaria, including the Jordan Valley, is 79 miles long and between 19 and 34 miles wide. To the south of Jerusalem and Bethlehem is a large block of Jewish communities in Judea called the Gush Etzion, in another part of what the world calls the West Bank. We're at the highest point in Gush Etzion. We're on the, the backbone of the hills that control the lowlands in both directions. And that is the Mediterranean Sea and the coastal plain, Tel Aviv, Ashdod, Ashkelon, down to Gaza. And we can see the rockets come out of there. And when you look this way, when we look east, um, we're looking towards Jordan. First we have the hills here, which belong to Gush Etzion. They go from Hebron 
all the way up to Jerusalem. And there's Jordan on the other side. That's it. That's all we got. This is the width. <laughs> and we're on top. Ruthie Lieberman is a wife and mother. Originally from Ohio, she is raising her family in a community called Alon Shavut in Gush Etzion. Jews established several farming communities here before the State of Israel in 1948. But during Israel's War of Independence, they were destroyed and the residents killed or driven away. After the 1967 Six-Day War, the Jews returned to rebuild here. Who are your neighbors? Um, I think having Lebanon in the north, Syria to the uh, northeast, but then we come around and have Egypt to the south. We're not, we're not in a great area. There are 24 Muslim states surrounding Israel from Morocco to Iran, more than 8 million square miles of land, more than 500 times the size of Israel where some half a billion people live. Judea and Samaria stand between Israel's major population centers and the Arab world. Without it, in some places, Israel is just nine miles wide. The Arabs, many factions, Palestinians, hate the Jews. Do you hate the Arabs? I don't think the Arabs who live nearby in the village right. over there, I don't think they hate me. Mm -hmm. I think they're taught to hate me. 20 years ago, then-Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin and PLO leader Yasser Arafat signed the Oslo Accords and shook hands on the White House lawn. And still, there is no peace. You see that, that this could possibly become a future Palestinian state. If it were to become a Palestinian state, I would imagine that it would be because there's some huge breakthrough and the whole world believes that now we have peace in this part of the world. And mm. if that's true, then I can live here. Mm -hmm. I'm Jewish, I bought the land, and I should be able to keep my home. In every talks that we hear, we're out of the picture. We'll have to pack up and go. The scriptures teach us to pray for Jerusalem, pray for Israel. Do you think it makes any difference? I hope that all of you continue to pray for Jerusalem every day. It strengthens us, it strengthens our psyche, it strengthens our hopes. We know that we're not alone. Up next, the Golan Heights, one of the most strategic battles of the Six-Day War. Now, for a limited time, you can get five of CBN's critically acclaimed documentaries. Experience the rebirth of the modern state of Israel. A historic bond between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Relive the battle for Jerusalem in the Six-Day War. Jerusalem is yours forever. Discover how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. When people need us, we volunteer and we come and help. Explore the world of Israeli technological innovation. We're people of dreams. God gives us dreams. And that's really the roots, I think, of, of much of our innovation. And understand the biggest land dispute in history. Many Palestinian Arabs claim that the Jews stole Arab land. But is that the real story? This exclusive Israel DVD collection can be yours for a gift of $40 or more. Call now or go online to get your Israel DVD bundle today. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. Near the end of the Six-Day War, attention shifted away from here in Jerusalem. About 120 miles away, Israeli troops took control of the strategic Golan Heights. And just last year, President Trump officially recognized Israel's annexation of the Golan. 
Whoever sits on the Golan Heights totally dominates this whole region. That's in part because of the proximity to the Sea of Galilee. The Golan Heights shares borders with Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon, and Damascus is only 40 miles away. For decades, Syria controlled the Golan Heights. Here on the high ground overlooking the Sea of Galilee, Syrian artillery and snipers shot and shelled Israelis below. Children grew up running to bomb shelters, and residents lived under the constant threat of attack. So all along the line of this cliff were Syrian bunkers and military posts and cannons and artilleries. The communities beneath the Golan Heights were totally at the mercies of the Syrians. Overlooking the Sea of Galilee, Middle East expert Avi Melamed told me why this ground is so important. Now, you have to remember, the Sea of Galilee is the biggest fresh uh, water body um, in Israel, providing something like 25, 30 percent of the water consumption or the fresh water consumption in Israel. In 1948 until 1967, what happened was that the Syrians occupied some strategic areas. The major result of that was an enormously increasing pressure on Israel, mostly in the context of the water and the use of water. Israel faced a literal uphill battle against the Syrian army, a rocky slope that rose 1,700 feet from the Sea of Galilee. Israel captured the Golan Plateau during the last two days of the Six-Day War. We were afraid that uh, Syria will come back. And again, they will shell the valley and try to take the water, to take the Jordan. We decided to make the first uh, kibbutz in the Golan Heights. And just a month after the war, Yehuda Harel and his family joined the first Israelis moving here. We got a permission from the army to get inside the Golanites because it was a military area. And uh, we got a job from them to collect cows that were wild in the area. They first lived in what had been housing for Syrian army officers. We are very near to Kunetra about 100 meters from Conetra, and we are near to the quarter that we used to live here for almost five years. This was the house that we, with uh, another three families, lived in this house. Eventually, the community moved across the ridge and still farms near the border. Today, close to 50,000 people, more than 25,000 Israelis, and about 22,000 Druze live on the Golan Heights. It's known for its fresh fruit, like the grapes used in award-winning Israeli wines. In the last uh, more than 40 years, the Golan Heights is the most quiet area of Israel. Everything happened in the other side of the border. But that could be changing. Do you see any similarities between the conditions prior to 1967 and the conditions now? I would say that the strategic threat, as far as Israel is concerned, is today much more severe in comparison to the pre-1967. The major reason for that is that the presence of Iranians and Iranian-backed Shiite militias stone throw away from the Israeli-Syrian ceasefire line. Melamed said Iran wants to establish a new front here, similar to those established in South Lebanon and the Gaza Strip. Trying to launch a military front against Israel in the Golan Heights will uh, could result in a massive eruption, because Israel would not stand for that, and rightly so. On the 49th anniversary of the Six-Day War, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made it very clear how Israel views the Golan Heights. They are for peace. In the stormy region around us, Israel is the stabilizing factor. Israel is the solution, not the problem. The Golan Heights will forever remain in Israel's hands. Israel will never come down from the Golan Heights. For now, Harel says there's a reason why this area has remained quiet. We live in peace. It's a peace because we are in the Golan Heights. When we were only in the valley and the enemy was up on the hill, it was not peace. To live in peace, you have to be strong and to live in the higher place. Still ahead, in our hands, CBN's documentary's classic film on the Six-Day War. CBN Israel, standing with Israel and blessing God's people. Join us, get breaking news from the Holy Land, witness biblical history uncovered, 
Learn the true story of Israel through groundbreaking films. Help Holocaust survivors and other Israelis in need. Be part of the redemptive story God is telling through His chosen people. CBN Israel, together we will stand. Join CBN Israel today. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. To mark the 50th anniversary of the Six-Day War, CBN Documentaries produced a docudrama marking the historical battle over Jerusalem. It's called In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem, and it's available on DVD. Take a look. In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem is now available on DVD. May God be with you. It is a very emotional experience. It was amazing. My heart was up here. And true. You want me to plan an entire war in two days? Yes. Seen in theaters nationwide, you can now own the acclaimed CBN documentary, In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem, for a gift of $15 or more. It's important. Inspiring. Just teary-eyed. They divided the land of God. The production value is incredible. It is a powerful documentary that should be seen and understood by every American. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You need to see this film. Everybody should see this. Get In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem, now available on DVD. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. If you'd like your own copy of In Our Hands, The Battle for Jerusalem, you can go to CBN.com slash In Our Hands. Well, thanks for joining us for this special edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.